Well, according to report, reports and Roy Hibbert, several of the Pacers were upset with Shane Battier by the end of game one. You may remember in the first quarter, Battier drove to the rim, extended his knee, and touched Hibbert's groin area and was called for an offensive foul. Hibbert tweeted about it, and he basically said, Battier, I'm paraphrasing, keep up the dirty play, but I'll continue to protect the rim. Did Battier and the Heat cross the line? We welcome in Atlanta Hawks forward Dante Jones to help us answer that question. How are you? Great. How are you and doing? he has never crossed the line. I don't think he has. Unless did. maybe you ask Kobe Bryant, right? Right. But you said that you, you came on the show and explained yourself, <laughs> correct? Right. You did nothing wrong. I didn't try to do anything wrong. I take, in, in, in retrospect, hindsight is always 2020, and did he come down on my foot? Yes, but I wasn't trying to advertly. Go on, un, go under him in, in in the in the middle of the play and step under him and try and hurt him. No, not at all. He seems like a nice young man. I believe. Oh, he's him. a nice young man. But he plays some tough basketball. I play, now. I play hard. Yeah. I play to win and, I, and I'm physical and I and. Did I, you and Kobe ever talk after that? No, nah, we didn't get a chance to. Okay. But if I, when I do get a chance to speak to him, uh, you, my first my first words to him is, is is no, that's not the way my intention. If I wanted to hurt him, I would hurt him at the beginning of the game. Mm. <laughs> Okay. Like, not give him a chance to. Uh, like, uh, if that was my mindset, say, I w it wouldn't be something you take at the end of the game. You take it at the beginning of the game. All right. You don't want to deal with him. Gentlemen, yeah. can I say one thing? May I say one thing, please? Dante Jones. Yes, sir. It, 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 would, it, it, would need, it would need to be It would need to be a phone call you'd need to make. I don't think he would call you. <laughs> oh, definitely not. <laughs> I think you got to call him. Okay. I think you got to call him. Or, or you, or you don't have to. Or you don't have right. to. Or you can send him a tweet, whatever you'd like. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the topic exactly. at hand. <laughs> Okay. Did Batty and the Heat cross the line, in your opinion? You watch game one. I don't think so. I think they played extremely hard. I think they played physical. I think one knock on them is that they're not physical and they don't have the height necessary. But they have athletes. Um, they play hard. They play to win. And those three plays are, are plays that where it was inadvertent contact. Yes, when you're taught to go to the basketball basket as a child, you're taught the form of leading with your, your, your leg. And it's kind of protection. It's kind of just a natural movement of, of trying to make a layup. Norris Cole's play, hitting David West in the groin area. I think his arm just got caught. And then the box out between Tyler Hansborough and, um, and Shane Battier, it was just a just an arm flail falling down. I don't think it would, these were plays that would try to, to hit anybody or hurt anybody, not at all. Do you think that they said that because they lost? Do you feel like Roy and the other players were just upset because they lost? I don't think if they won the game, they would be discussing these plays. <laughs> Okay, okay, hold on. Let's go back to the Battier play okay. for a second. Gotcha. Now, I don't see a lot of guys leading with their knee as they drive to the basket. <laughs> now, I can argue that, that Shane was trying to protect himself against a seven foot two mountain of a man standing in the middle of the lane. But I don't see a lot of NBA players going in knee first. Do, do you see a lot? I, if you lead off one leg, you go yeah. in knee first. One, well, one but, arm goes with one leg. That's just. But I, I use the baseball analogy. It's like sliding in with your spikes high. That, that's what Shane was doing. You know, with with the knee high, going in high into Broy. Do I think that he was protecting himself? Yes. yes. Do I think that he tried to hit him in the groin. No. No, I don't. That's either. not a pinpoint move you can make as you're trying to look at the basket, trying to score, trying to weigh all the things around you. No. But I thought he was protecting himself and going to the basket as normal. Have you ever considered Shane Battier even a remotely dirty player? When I think of Shane Battier, I think of him as a winner. Um, won a national championship, has been a part of two great streaks. Um, he's always been a winner throughout his career, and he plays extremely hard. He plays the right way, so I don't think of him as a dirty player. Yeah. Stephen A. I totally agree with Dante Jones. I don't see him as a dirty player at all. I see him as somebody who plays extremely hard. He's class personified. He's going to go out there. He's going to compete with you. He's not dirty. He can be slick, just like most <laughs> players, like I said earlier, Dante Jones. Uh -oh. uh, but, but they play smart. They play smart. They play tough. They come at you. And I find nothing dirty about Shane Battier. He's just going to go out there and compete. I see him as somebody that was trying to protect himself. I think that anybody that comes from that program usually is about winning, but also about winning the right way. They will get up in you. They will fight you. They're incredibly feisty. But I wouldn't use the word dirty. Uh, that's too much of a derogatory and incendiary level, label to, uh, to place on, on, on anybody that's played for Mike Krzyzewski as far as I'm concerned, particularly a Shane Battier. That's just my feeling from years and years of watching. That whole debate you said about us playing within the rules of the game, you're exactly right. We know the rules. We know how hard to play. We know how to win. And, and we use the rules to our advantage. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let me bring it back to Dante. Okay. Sure. Roy Hibbert. You yes. played with him in Indiana. Yes. He has come a long ways. Extremely. Long ways. Extremely. But to me, 
when you tweet about this and you basically accuse Shane of a cheap shot in your tweet, I know what you were trying to do, you come off to me as a little soft, like that's a, using that public forum to, that, that's whiny to me after you lost. Do you think a little less of Roy for, for tweeting that? No, I don't think less of Roy. I know Roy, so I know that's the type of man he is. He takes each win and loss to heart, and he speaks from his heart. And at that point in time, it was weighing on him, and that's just the type of man that he is. He's come great lengths in his career. He's not what he used to be. He's a, he's a dominant force in the NBA, and that was something that was on his mind, and he just spoke. Should he not speak about things? I don't think so, but that's just the man that he is, and that's what he's about. You don't think he should have said yeah, the tweet. He shouldn't have said I don't it. think he should have sent the tweet, but that's just the way he is, so, so you just have to be yourself, I guess. Yeah, he's a deep thinker now. We've had him on the show. He's, he's an eloquent man, oh, he and, and he wants to, to be emotional, express his emotions. I'm just saying, to the heat, when they see that, it's like, gotcha. It you know, like, mm -hmm. It shows weakness. Yeah, it shows weakness, and, exactly. And you shouldn't do those things, but yeah. you have to be true to your own self. All right. Stephen A., what do you think of, of Hibbert's tweet? Well, I don't think, listen, like I said, I'm not going to overreact the way you're doing, Skip. I mean, the fact <laughs> of the matter is I think he's complaining. I don't think he should. Um, I think he should focus on, on trying to win game two. Uh, for all I know, this was a tactical measure to bring attention uh, to stuff in game two. So maybe he can get calls or maybe there are calls that will go against Shane Batty and the Miami Heat. But in the end, I certainly wouldn't accuse him of coming across as weak or soft because he's elected to do it. He's pointing out something. And by the way, uh, the, the area where he got hit at, I think as men, we're all soft. All of us. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Well, which that. brings us back to the Norris Cole play, which was just bizarre to me, because yeah. David West took it in the groin area as, as he yeah. drove by. I don't know if we have that play handy, yeah. but uh, but it was just, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen that play happen before, where he's He's just going by and just, do you think he got caught? If you pay attention to him, he's not even looking at him. No? And he's looking at the basket. But there is peripheral him. vision, you know? I mean, it, but he's but he's past when, where his arm is and where he's and where his head is. He, he can't see where his arm is. He was trying to shed David West and get his arm off him. His hand just got caught, and I don't think he knew exactly where his arm was. He was oh. trying to bring it back to him. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. wow. That, that, that's a terrible okay, play, yes. But I don't you're not real pleased first. about it. Right, right, right. Right? Yeah, Stephen A. A hey, hey, Skip, in all my years of watching NBA basketball, wow. the only time, and I'm not saying it's the only time it's happened, but the only time I ever saw a man intentionally hit somebody down there with his hand or his arm or whatever was Dennis Rodman. It's the only mm -hmm. time I've ever seen it happen. Ever. Well, now I, I must say I saw it happen. Chris Paul back in college at Wake Forest. Remember that on Julius Hodge? Yeah, that, that was just yeah, a flat-out yeah, 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 yeah. shot. I, I remember that. Yeah, okay. That's the only time I've seen true. it happen in basketball. That's true. All right, guys. So uh, game one was a heartbreaker, obviously, for the Pacers. And we talked about this in the morning meeting. You and Stephen A are of the same thought, that game three is truly the deciding factor for the Pacers. The one back in Indiana. Yeah, yeah no, for them yeah. to win. You think it'll be a sweep. So I, I, I didn't say it was a sweep. I got five games. Five, yeah, I'm leaning towards, leaning towards yeah. a sweep. So I'm going to ask... Our guest, our NBA analyst for the day, what uh, chances do you give the Pacers? I think the Pacers are a great team. Mm -hmm. They play well together. I think, as Stephen A. said, game three is the most important game. If they win that, then they have a bigger chance of winning the series. But if they lose game three, I don't give them too much hope in winning the series. Um, they do great at home. They get confidence if they win game three. They get confidence for the rest of the series and going to Miami and trying to get a game there. But if game three doesn't go their way, it's going to be a problem. If game three doesn't go their way, you okay. What if it does go their way? Then what but happens? If it goes their way, it gives them added, um, added incentive, added, added confidence. They get a chance to to use their home crowd and, and try and get game four, and then they can they can try and get game five in Miami. If they don't get that one, then it's going to be it's going it's to take a lot of lot from that confidence and take a lot. What, what if Who the pace? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Who wins the series? The Miami Heat wins the series. Okay, so you don't really give. In my much. opinion, the Miami Heat win the series, yeah. but it's not going to be an easy series. All right. What if the Pacers win tonight? Who wins the series? The Miami Heat win the series. Even th it's going to go seven games. Okay. You'd have it in seven if the Pacers can win game two. Mm. Yes. Okay. Stephen A. I have it in six even if the Pacers win game two. If they lose game two, then I have it in five because I think Miami will steal one in Indianapolis. I believe that the series is going six games because I I I'm – my, my, my opinion is predicated on the series being tied after four and Miami winning games five and six. 
I don't see Miami losing game five back in Miami. I see them winning game five and probably closing it out in six games. But the Indiana Pacers would have to win, you know, probably have to win the night to extend it to a, a six-game series. If not, they could very well lose in five. Okay, Dante, you have seen in the past the Heat get a little full of themselves. If, if they win tonight, is it possible they'll get a little overconfident going into game three? No. I think they're a focused group of guys. I think that the, the experience and the maturity that Shane Battier and, and Birdman brings and those guys winning a championship last year, that is enough to keep them focused on the ultimate goal. And, no, I don't think they'll get, get ahead of themselves and, and get a little full at that point in time, no. All right. You're speaking so low, I don't I don't know what you're saying. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. I'm joking with you. Uh, you're going to stick around throughout the show. Definitely. Good. Coming up next, gentlemen and lady for me, Tyron Matthew has signed a deal with the Cardinals.